In this video, I'm just going to talk about some basic vocabulary and terms um, as we're getting started in statistics. So very first is, what is statistics? And this definition that I've written here is from uh, Triola's Elementary Statistics textbook, um, page 5. And it says that statistics is the science of planning studies and experiments, obtaining data for those studies and experiments, and then organizing, summarizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting this, those data, and finally drawing conclusions based on them. So in this class we're going to talk a lot about sort of the mathematics behind this um, and how we can organize and summarize and present and analyze uh, data. But the really important piece of statistics is being able to collect a bunch of data about something and then figure out some sort of meaningful conclusion to, um, to come to. So as you're going through this class, when we talk about things that we're measuring like hypothesis tests or means or standard deviation that we're going to talk about, you want to, in the end, be thinking about, okay, well, what does this tell us and, and how do we um, draw conclusions based on this information? So central to this whole idea of statistics is, of course, data. And data can be a very broad range of information. So when you are studying something, um, you might make observations, measurements, ask people questions and record their answers, look at characteristics of a group of people or things, all kinds of things, and all of that information is considered data. So if you are considering, say, ice cream consumption in the United States, you might ask people what their favorite flavor of ice cream is. That would be a piece of data. You might measure how much each person um, spent on ice cream and find an average. Both the numbers for each person and also the average are data. So data encompasses a lot. And first and foremost, we want to sort of split our data into two things. The first thing we have is population. And the population is all the data under consideration, so everything we're interested in studying. Compared to that, we also have sample. And the sample is the data or, or pieces of information that we can actually measure or survey. So again, if we were interested in ice cream consumption in the US, we wouldn't necessarily be able to talk to every single person in the United States, but we might look at um, a few people and ask their ice cream pr preferences, um, and that would be our sample. So a sample is part of the population, but it's not the whole thing. So we've got our sample of people, and then outside that we have the population. So the population is who we're interested in, the sample is who we actually get to talk to. Uh, and these aren't necessarily people, but oftentimes you can have your sample and population be people. One important piece of, of vocabulary that we'll use here is that when we're talking about a population, um, data or information about the population, uh, if it's numerical, is called a parameter. Whereas data or information about a sample is called a statistic. Um, so we want to be careful in our usage of these two words. Parameters are things like, say, the average amount that U.S. Um, households eat ice cream. That would be the whole population. Um, whereas a statistic is just something like an average or some sort of numerical data about our sample specifically. So if we're talking about a sample, we want to use the term statistic. If we're talking about a population, that would be a parameter. Next piece here, um, two terms that we'll talk about early on is significance, both statistical significance and practical sig significance. So first of all, statistical significance. Statistical significance says that the result we're getting is unlikely to be just accidental or just by chance. 
So for example, if we thought that the average age of a Red Rock student was 27 years old, and that was our hypothesis, um, and we did a survey and asked six people or six students how old they were, and we got a sample age of 38 years old. Well, clearly this is higher than our 27 years old, but we could ask, well, does this have statistical significance? If the population actually was an average of 27 years old, would it be uh, likely that we might get 38 years old just by chance? Well, it depends. In this case, if we only asked six people, then yeah, this could just be accidental. You might have just happened to ask six people that were older than average. If we had asked a thousand people, then we might say, yes, this does have statistical significance. So this is sort of a mathematical calculation that we have to do. Um, but if we say something has statistical significance, it means that it's probably a legitimate result and not just something that happened by chance. The next piece is practical significance. Practical significance is not a mathematical calculation. This is basically just saying that the result we have is meaningful. It has some sort of um, practical purpose. So for example, if you studied a new diet and found that there's a statistically significant weight loss difference in those who did the diet, and over three months those who are on the diet lost an additional 2.8 pounds above what those who weren't on the diet did. So that if we're saying that this is statistical signif statistically significant, that means that it's not accidental that these people really did statistically w lose a little more weight. But we might not say that this has practical significance because 2.8 pounds over three month period is just not that significant of a difference. So practical significance is really just a question of, well, should we care about this? Is this helpful for us? Whereas statistical significance is more of a mathematical judgment about whether our results are robust enough to, to really make a, a conclusion based on them. Last piece of information I want to talk about here are two different types or categories of data. The first category is categorical or qualitative data. Categorical data is something like a label or a description, a name. It's some kind of information about um, something that we're studying but it's generally not a number. So some examples here we might have um, the color of something, if we were surveying for eye color, um, someone's nationality, or um, uh, gender. These are all sort of labels or descriptions that we can record about a person or thing. This is in comparison to numerical or quantitative data. And numerical or quantitative data is something that's actually a number. So this could be an age, it could be a height, um, a weight, some count of something, how many dollars someone has in their bank account or something like that. It could be something like a test score. Basically anything that's a number would fall under numerical or quantitative data. We want to split these into two different types because typically we can only really do statistics or at least the mathematical side of statistics with something that's a number. Categorical or qualitative statistic or information is also very important in many cases, but it can be more difficult to study since we can't do mathematical operations like finding an average. Here's a problem for you to try. This one has a few parts. A study is done to see if a certain drug affects the weight of cats. Among all cats, the average weight is 9 pounds, but when the drug was given to 30 cats, their average weight was 8.75 pounds. So we've got some summary questions about this. Go ahead and fill out these answers, and I'll see you in the next video.